So a little bit about Bluebeam, if you're not familiar with uh, Bluebeam as a, as a company. Uh, it was founded in uh, the year 2002. They're headquartered out of the U USA. And uh, today they have over 1.6 million users around the world. Their flagship product, which is uh, Review or Bluebeam Review, provides the building industry PDF-based tools to help communicate better. So just like I mentioned there, Bluebeam Review is software to help you communicate better. It's based on a PDF workflow that enables you to do things like design review, QA, QC, quantity takeoffs, submittal reviews, RFIs, and much, much more. So review uh, does this by giving you best in class markup tools. It improves collaboration with tools and uh, industry specific tools. A few that are listed there uh, on the slide. So Bluebeam comes in three different editions. There's the standard edition, which provides you the core features of, of review, uh, the 2D and 3D markups, uh, markup list, tool chests, sets and measurement tools. Uh, CAD, the CAD version, which is one step up from standard, which expands on the core features of standard by providing you add-ins for AutoCAD, SketchUp and many other applications, as well as it gives you batch uh, PDF creation. And the extreme is uh, it has it all. It uh, is got all the functionality of standard and CAD, as well as some batch slip sheeting, quantity linking to Excel, uh, for uh, quantity takeoff um, and form creation and a lot more of the other items there, OCRing and uh, redaction and what have you. So when you buy Bluebeam, Bluebeam is a perpetual license model, meaning that you buy the license and that license is uh, yours to use perpetually um, in the version that you've bought it. Uh, Bluebeam does offer annual maintenance on their perpetual licenses. If, uh, if you're familiar with the Autodesk model, this is what they used to do uh, years ago. Now they've moved to a subscription only uh, model. Uh, but the maintenance, uh, if you put maintenance on your Bluebeam licensing, it does uh, allow you to get free upgrades throughout that uh, maintenance coverage period. It also gives you access to some exclusive features and it also uh, gives you unlimited technical phone support directly with Bluebeam. So now that we know a little bit about Bluebeam Review and what it's all about, the real purpose of this webinar today is to show you what's new in the most recently released version, 2009. Uh, it addresses the speed, accuracy, and standardization of their application. So I'm gonna uh, now turn it over to Emily. Uh, she's uh, gonna be able to take you through some of the feature sets and improvements on 2009. Emily? Hi, thanks, Paul. Um... I'm going to go through the actual um, updates to uh, review. The first one is improved rendering uh, with HAIR. So HAIR is a hardware accelerated rendering engine, and this is going to help us pan and zoom uh, a lot faster than previously we were able to in review. So these rendering improvements are going to help you pan and zoom and improve your load times as you're doing this. So I've got a little video queued up and I'm just going to play it. So let's see everybody there. So on the left of this video, you're going to see the old rendering engine. And you can see as the person is, is kind of zooming around, panning around this document. It's a little laggy as they zoom in, it's jumpy. Um, and so the old uh, review 29, uh, 2018 and previous was using a default uh, Windows hardware to uh, render your, so render your um, review. And the new review, Re Review 2019, uses, um, has switched to an open source library called Skia, which allows access to your graphics processing unit. Um, so that's your graphics card on your computer. And so um, it enables a, a lot faster switching and panning and zooming um, and review is really trying to uh, improve this everyday use. We, you know, re rendering affects everyone as you're panning and zooming around your, your document all day long. Uh, you're, if, it's, if it's loading slowly and laggy, it can be really frustrating. So this is, um, I popped over to review here. And if we can see here in our top left corner, uh, I've got my review menu, and this is a great menu to, to come to do a lot of administrative stuff. I can switch between view and markup mode. 
I can check out my profiles here, um, keyboard shortcuts, uh, administration tools. And so in this case, I'm going to go up to preferences. And in preferences, again, a, a huge quantity of information here. Um, and I'm going to take a look down here at advanced. And there's my rendering engine setup. So it's now listed as hardware. So that's the newest one. So when you install review 2019, all you have to do is install it and you're good to go. You don't need to change any, anything, any settings to make this work. Um, so hardware is uh, allowing access, allows the software access to your graphics processing card, which is great. The other two options there, software uh, still uses the new Skia engine. So you will get a few, uh, you know, speed improvements, but it's not going to use your GPU. Um, so it won't be the full improvement there. And then legacy, if there's a, if there's a problem with your, your graphics card or anything, you can always go back all the way to the legacy model. So 2018 and previous, so it'll function like normal. It'll, it'll be a bit laggy, but if you need to just temporarily enable that where you get your a new graphics card, you can do so. All right. So that's the new rendering engine set up. Okay. Our next improvements are quantity improvement takeoffs. So we've got an automatic dialog box that'll pop up when you're doing any measurement tools. Um, and you can scale it in two different ways now. Uh, I've got independent units. Um, so as I'm making markups, such as area or volume, I can now set them in different units. And I've got running totals. So when I've got a few different markups on my building, um, I can select those markups and I can see the different, um, I, can, I can see the total for those markups that I have selected. So if I pop over to review, here we are, I've got my standard building here. Now, often you'll get a, a drawing like this, and sometimes the scale's in the title block, sometimes it's over here. So we know this is one to eight, or one eighth, sorry, stuck in metric. And let's, uh, just gonna control Z on a few things here. There we go, back to scale, not set. Okay, so I can see that I'm one to eight, one eighth of an inch, but my scale is not set here. So you can always look down towards this area to check if your scale is set. One of the new features here is in our thumbnails panel, there is now the ability to see the scale per page in your thumbnails view. And if you can't see it right away, you can always go here and turn on the page scale. So it can be turned off and it might be by default. So, so just click on your thumbnails uh, option labels here and page scale, so I can turn it on. So that's really nice. You can see that by, by page. And now as I zoom in over here, I'm going to use uh, a length measurement here. I'm just going to see if my length, if I were to take a length, is it accurate? So I'm going to use my length measurement, one, two, and it comes up and it looks like it's a zero at first, but that's because my page is not scaled. So we're going to take a look and calibrate in this pop-up. So this is the old method. Calibrate was where we take a known dimension, we pick two points, and I'm going to tell review. Um, oh, yes. I'm going to tell review what that value is. So I know that, that distance is 30 feet, so I can type in 30 feet here. Ooh, 30 feet. And when I apply this scale, my markup should scale. Now you can see that this guy is a little off, so that's why I'm getting missing my quarter of an inch. Let's delete that guy and we'll do them again after we scale it. So I can always calibrate. That's the original method, still the recommended method, because you know you never know who's played with this file before you got it. But if you've been assured by you know the architect, the engineer, or someone that this is definitely to scale, you can forget about the calibration and you can use this preset mode here. So now in this preset, I can pick from a list of commonly used scales. So we, we know that this one is an eighth of an inch here. And I can set my precision as well. Uh, and I can apply this to different page. So I only have one page here, but I could apply it to the whole project um, document set automatically, or just this page or a couple of pages. So it depends on whether what your set looks like. So 
I'm going to apply my scale. And let's try that dimension tool again. All right, link from there to there. There's my 30 feet. So we can be sure that my PDF is calibrated correctly. All right, so then the next one that review has got, uh, the next update is to our area and volume tools. They still more or less function as they always have. And then I can select and create an area in the same way I always have been. Now, when I select this, I've got a slightly different um, couple of options on my properties bar here. So all of my color and line and all of that stuff is the same. But I do have a new box here called units. So I can adjust the units depending on what I need to see. So before the units used to be um, set up depending on how you scaled the drawing. So if you scaled it to metric, you only could see your units in metric and vice versa with imperial. But now I can set this to square feet, even though I'm using a metric, even though it's showed up in metric and I'm using an imperial scale. So I can do square feet, square meters, square kilometers, and whatever this is. I've seen this one before. Um, all right. And the other new thing is here I've got an area. So as I've got this markup selected, I've got what they call a running total available. I've only got one markup selected. So my total is the same as the main markup, but as I add more markups here, so let me add another one, All right? So now I've got two offices and I can select, I can use shift and select both of those markups and uh oh, not the same units. So I'm not getting my area here. That's okay. I can switch them both out to be the same unit. And when I do, there's my running total. So now I can just select a couple of markups and get the area of those markups as opposed to using my markups list. It essentially will get me the same result except for every markup on my sheet. So I get a running total here. But if I have 15 or 20 meeting rooms selected, you're gonna, I'm gonna get those 15 or 20 total. Uh, so now I can just select two and I got a running pool. So it's, it's quite nice. And this also can affect us over here. If we were to look at, let me just pop over to a site plan. We've got a lot of irregular shapes on a site plan. So if I were looking for something like volume for some of these irregular shapes, I can't just do what I did on that office and drag a nice square. Uh, so I'm going to use this nifty dynamic fill. Now the dynamic fill tool is not new, but just the way I'm going to interact with the units is new. So I'm going to click, click my fill here and I'm going to fill in this area and this one. You can see how fast this is. So if you haven't been using the dynamic fill before, give it a try. It's, it's a fantastic quick way to accomplish a lot of stuff. So look at that. I finished all of those complex areas quickly. I can select what type of uh, measurement I want. So here's my volume and I, that's what I'm going to want. And I'll hit apply, Oops, unselected it. I can hit apply and it applies that area or that volume to all of these areas. And if I wanted to keep going, I could continue making more markups of a different type somewhere else in the drawing. But if I'm done, I can hit close. Now you can see that they all have, um, oh, I always do that. Just hold shift to move your measurement there if you can't see it. Um, and now I can select all of these markups at once and check out their units. So here's my volume. Cubic meters is fine with me for now, but in order to have a value show up in there, I got to set a depth. So let's say I want to know the six, top six inches of this, uh, of these areas. So there is my cubic meters of space, which I could switch to any other unit I need to. Oh, they seem to be, oh, <laughs> cubic feet, not square feet. There we go. And here's my cumulative volume. Um, so that's that running total again. So if I were to shift de deselect a couple of these, you can see that that area is decreasing. So if you, if somebody's asking you for specific areas, you don't have to manually add them up anymore. Quite nice. All right. So those are our, you know, some great tools. 
and, uh, and I'm looking forward to the improvements they're going to continue making in these tools. Um, review is really focused on making your uh, experience uh, better. So let's go back to PowerPoint. We've taken a look at our quantity takeoffs. And so the last one is the review configuration editor. So this falls um, under the IT side of things a little more than the general user, but it, it's definitely useful um, for the IT as they are deploying it. It's, uh, they have less errors um, and better consistency among the deployment. So the old configuration process was just an exercise in patience. You had a lot of, um, you had to do some programming, run some items through the command line, or download a, a separate MSI editor. Um, and there was just a lot of stuff to remember and think about. But now you can see on the right hand side here, oops, ahead of myself, new configuration process is a five-step process. You've got some straightforward yes or no questions or on-off options. You can set your path uh, and basically it's, it's as, they're trying to make it as simple as it can be um, for just better ease of use uh, and, and less likely to have to redeploy if you've messed something up. Um, and so here it is, you've got all these different options. So this is not part of review itself. It is a downloadable, a separate downloadable package. Uh, it's available through the Bluebeam support page and the deployment package. So if your IT is looking for that, it's, uh, they'll just have to go to the Bluebeam website and find the deployment package and then they will have access to this configuration editor. So those are pretty much all of the tools that review has updated in 2019. And I think they're pretty fantastic. So I hope you do too. Um, so I'm going to pass it back to Paul and he's going to talk about some more of our Red Cage training and resources. Paul? Thanks, Sam. Yeah, so I'm glad that uh, we got through all of that. I, hopefully there were some in interesting and useful uh, tips uh, in what Emily had showed you there. Um, I just want to take a second uh, to talk a little bit uh, further about what Red Cage can help you with on top of the Bluebeam. So, we offer a wide array of, of professional services, such as mentoring, training, consultation services. And basically all of that is to, to help your users get more productivity out of the softwares that they, they use on a day-to-day -day basis. Our, our professional services are on Bluebeam, Autodesk software, as well as some of the other software and products that we've uh, shown there um, earlier in the, in the presentation. And uh, we also work with firms and companies in regards to their, their workflows and processes internally. So that could be how to get over to BIM, uh, adopt BIM and work with it a little bit better. Bluebeam fits into that, uh, that equation as well. Uh, there's also scanning to BIM, uh, your CAD workflows, just because you're moving into a 3D world or a BIM world or BIM process doesn't mean that you have to throw AutoCAD or your CAD package out the window. That can be definitely part of the process as well. And project, project management from, from basically design right through to commissioning of your, your projects. Uh, we can help you with all of that. So we hope today's uh, webinar was informative and helpful. Uh, if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about uh, how to get Bluebeam Review 2019 or how to upgrade to it if you already have a, a license of Bluebeam, uh, feel free to give us a, a or contact us in any of the ways that are listed up on the screen there. Um, if you have any other further questions or would like additional information after the webinar is concluded, uh, you're more than welcome to drop us an email. We, uh, we put the emails up there for both Emily and I earlier in the, in the presentation. Or if uh, you missed that, you're more than welcome to email us through the sales at redcage.ca uh, email. Uh, that will eventually find it over, over to us. 